Encinitas is known to some as the yoga capital of the country. It's been said that there's more yoga studios per capita in Encinitas than anywhere in this country. So when people ask what makes Yoga Swami different from all those yoga studios, what I've always said is precisely the space, the form. And being something of an architectural nerd, I thought, wow, you know, a yurt, which, you know, when you think about it as a perfectly round structure, that everyone's along the edges, focusing in towards one center point. It gives you the opportunity to contribute something that isn't just money. And it really helps you connect with the people that are in our environment. I just will never forget my first night here, just feeling so overwhelmed by the love and support that I felt just from this collective energy of, of people who practice here. And um, I just remember thinking that night, like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be okay. This place was put here to provide the community with a place to gather in a sustainable manner. It's donation-based for the people to come that potentially can't afford to go spend 15 or 20 bucks on a class. This place always gives me refuge and really, like, empowers me and lifts me up. Every single thing that I have in my life and every person that I have in my life is because of this space. There's just been a rebirth from my soul. Yoga Swami's changed my life. Not so much the structure, but what happened inside. I was welcomed with open arms here. We're a community here and we grow together and we change together and we inspire each other. There's hundreds and hundreds of, of comments and pleas to keep this space and stories of how it's changed hundreds of people's lives for all of those voices and for myself. Um, please help us save our home. The situation that has arisen here and why the city's trying to re remove the yurt is is really because obviously it's not um, meeting some of the, the building codes and the standards that they have set forth. It's kind of like trying to fit a round peg into a square hole. Um, the yurt is certainly a sound structure from an engineering standpoint. The company um, that, that has manufactured these for I believe over 30 years, Colorado Yurt Company, uh, certifies each of their structures by an outside engineering firm. So. I think it really comes down to almost a uh, linguistics game where they're trying to fit this into a set of, of rules that were never designed to uh, govern over a structure like this. There's really a gray area in the city right now as far as structures like this are concerned. And you know, there's a gray area in a lot of different cities. The city doesn't see it meeting their international building codes, but that is just because they're not completely informed on what a yurt is. And so once they realize that it's seismically certified in the state of California, once they realize that it's ADA compliant in the state of California, that it's fire department certified in the state of California, and what we need to do is to show community support so that we can persuade them to go in the direction that's more favorable to yurts instead of having to pay $100,000 in permitting fees just to put up a $10,000 structure. Codes, the building codes are actually addressing um, health and safety. I've never experienced a building that offers health and safety as much as the yurt does to every person inside of it. They're extremely affordable to put up. Um, very little maintenance cost goes into maintaining them. Um, I think this perhaps could could be a, a boon to, to any business that would want to, you know, affect its bottom line positively or um, begin with the foundation uh, of so something like this to, to help them expand and, and grow in this economic time of need. In these times when there's a lot of home foreclosures, there's a lot of people without homes, there's a lot of uh, people without jobs, the unemployment rates are high. Um, there's a huge issue on the use of natural resources. This is an extremely efficient structure that um, the fact that it is having this many challenges to be permitted and allowed in the city of Encinitas is really an opportunity for all of us to work with the city, see what permitting processes we need to go through, what, what things we can look at to change to uh, plan our community in a much more vibrant and sustainable way.